Hello, uh, this is just going to be a quick talk, uh, a, well, a quick kind of walkthrough in the sense of version 1.9.1 .1. and I'll tell you about 1.9 changes were as well because the previous video was version 1.8 um, and version point version 1.9 I added the check for updates batch file what this does is this will check my SVN for updates if it finds that there's a newer version it will then update the current version to that version um, so you don't have to re-download zip files and stuff like that um, the next changes were I changed how the create save game dot work, dot dot works um, essentially if you want the end to be generic basically generated by the game don't put the dim1 folder in so when you're creating a save game if you want to reset your end um, basically just don't put the dim one folder in. If you put the dim one folder in, it'll import it into a save. If you don't, it doesn't. So that's handy if you're swapping like region files about and stuff like that and you want the end to have the ender dragon. Because if you replace the end with a non end region, the ender dragon won't be there because they're classed as entities. And those are not converted with a Prizos converter. So the next update was um, the actual converter itself um, I added some more options to that um, essentially convert overworld and nether and added in options to build saves so if you have previous files there you can build saves out of them so you can have a nether from one save and an overworld from another and you can just use my tool to build them it'll just build the save for you and convert them over and stuff like that um, the changes for 1.9.1 .1 are to the check for updates batch file. I updated that, it now gives you an option basically to auto install and manual install. Um, some people have been having issues with the VBS script. Uh, well, actually, one person that I know of um, who was testing it for me couldn't run it because it said it wasn't a valid Win32 executable. Don't know why. So I just added the manual install, so it'll download a zip file, you just extract it and overwrite everything. It's sorted. Um, the other update was to the extract profiles. Um, the import profile data now creates a brand a whole new save instead of re-importing into the old one. Um, the problem was if the save file compression size changed, it wouldn't import. Um, so sorry about that. Um, but now it'll just build a new save. So you import your profile data as long as it's smaller than the original or the same size. Um, Dark LIGO Fast on YouTube, he has tutorials and stuff how to edit profile data. Um, so go and look at that and then you can use that to extract and import profile data. Um, so anyway, go on to this. So chunk tools lets you extract chunks and import chunks. Straightforward. Um, convert overworld to end and nether, again self explanatory, once you convert a world with a prizes tool you can manually convert them to the end or the nether dimensions, create save game again self explanatory, place all your files in this folder so your dim minus one folder, your r.0.0.mcr file, minus one so forth, um, it won't import profile data okay so I'm just you know putting that out there, it will not import profile data. I used to use the save game for it, but in version 1.6 and above, I stopped um, because there was too many problems. Um, so I mean, this again is still, this is what you use if you want to extract profile data and import it. So you can use MBT Explorer to edit the profile data. Um, so extract save again self explanatory this can extract the region files only or extract all the files out of the save game dot that this is handy if you want to extract the chunks or you want to combine two saves together so you want to combine the nether region from one save with the overworld of another or the end from another extract the regions and create a new save game dot that with them so MC edit templates again self-explanatory. I 
have three templates, the end and the nether ones are one, uh, 864 by 864, but they have a border because the end region is only 18 by 18. Uh, the overworld is 54 by 54. So basically just put your world inside the bit in the middle. It's, it's bordered off with red wool. Um, other tools is the compress save game file and decompress. Essentially what this is for is people that want to add stuff, so add a new profile. You would have to update the index to do that. So it's, this isn't for, basically this is for people that know what they're doing. Simple. Um, compress save file will compress the extracted file back into a brand new save. Okay, so onto the appraisal converter now. So what you want to do is download appraisals tool. Um, go to his YouTube video and re-download it. Unless you have the latest version, which has updated and old. If you have these, you've got the right version. So what we'll do is run this. You'll get a notification sound and it'll tell you what it's doing and that's it. So what I added in version 1.8 was a, um, information screens essentially. Um, whether people noticed I had those or not, I don't know, but I'll get into that anyway. So if you just press enter here, I'll tell you about the borders. So the default border, as you can see, is one bedrock, 53 stone and nine water. And it gives you the total height. Same with the flatland border. Um, this is at the edge of the maps, if you don't know. So we'll just pick one. Now, as you can see, we have what region would you like to convert? We've got the overworld, overworld and nether, and convert all. Convert all will convert the overworld, the nether, and the end. Um, and then it'll combine them into one save called save game underscore combine dot that. Uh, what you would do with that file is you would rename it to save game dot that and import it into your save file. Uh, what I suggest doing is don't use that one because you won't get the Ender Dragon. Um, because Ender Dragon's class is an entity and the Prizos Converter doesn't convert over entities. So my suggestion would be use the Overworld and Nether. And that way you would have a proper Nether with the Ender Dragon. But you could have the sorry you'd have the proper end with I think I said end. I don't know. You'd have the proper end with the Ender Dragon. Uh, the nether in the overworld, it doesn't matter too much because there isn't a final boss, so, you know, it's, you can do what the hell you want with those, essentially. Um, if you hit enter, you'll get advanced options, um, which is, this, the convert nether and convert end, once, there's not much need for these, but some people might want them. Um, if you want to start combining different files over and stuff like that, then you could use that, so you can convert the nether. If you want to only convert the nether because you've got an overworld, then you would use this option. Um, free. I'll hit free. Um, if you've done that, if you created a nether file, you could use this file. So it's basically, you can convert the overworld and nether and it will build the save for you. Or if you've got the overworld, nether and end, it will convert, it will build, convert the nether and end over and it will build your save. And you'll be outputted with a save game underscore combine dot that, which then again you rename to save game dot that and import into your save. Um, region check, a regions check. Essentially, what this does is there's not much point using it in this menu because when you convert a world, when you can any conversion you do, it will automatically do this check anyway. But I just added it in anyway. I'm, you know, I might as well add another option. Um, essentially what it does is it scans through the PC files and it will check to make sure that they're valid. Um, basically it'll check to make sure there's no extra chunks. Um, because if there's more chunks then the converter will break and the prizes tool will break. Or it might not break but it might convert the world but the problem will be is one of the chunks will be the wrong value. So when you load your game and you fly to a certain area it will crash your game. Or worst case scenario, or refuse to load the game, and you've just wasted half an hour or an hour converting three regions. 
lists so it checks first and it'll tell you um, and it'll tell you what region's the problem and it'll tell you to check an MC edit so that's basically kind of it really um, the regions when converting are all colour coded so if you convert all it will convert the overworld nether and then end the overworld's green the end is the nether is red and the, the end is purple so when you're converting and you want to check how long you've got you could just look and see what colour it is if it's purple you're nearly done um, one thing I can't do is add a notif an audio notification for basically IDs that aren't in the game so you'd need to sit and watch it or at least check it every so often um, I can't add to a Prizes Converter, I can only change what he has in it so if he's got something in it I can modify it like the text strings, the colours um, I'd also like to thank him, um, he won't release a new version of the converter so I essentially just patch it into the latest version of his um, he removed the press enter prompt for me so that it counts down from 5 and then converts on um, so it's essentially if your world doesn't have any non-valid Xbox blocks it'll just go through the whole thing totally automatically and you'll be outputted with, you'll get a notification at the end uh, a sound notification saying that it's worked, it's converted uh, another thing is it'll convert over certain values out of le PC level dot dots um, I added that in version 1.9 basically It'll take the seed out of the PC world dot that, or the PC level dot that, and it'll take the spawn locations. So if you change the spawn location, I advise changing the player and the spawn location, put them in the same place, and nothing will go wrong. It'll always convert over correctly. Um, so essentially now you can manually set where you want to spawn. So that's a plus. So you can adjust the spawn points now. Um, when you're converting worlds. Uh, the change log just tells you what's changed. Um, the tool information basically just goes through basically what I've said, but it tells you exactly what it does. Um, that's really kind of I'm not going to show you it converting because it takes ages. Um, it just it works. There's no problems. Um, the plugin is 100% functional. I haven't had any errors, I haven't had any issues with it. Nobody that's tested it has any issues. It just works flawlessly. Um, any crashes that happen is due to appraisals tool. So if it comes up saying that appraisals converters get an, um, has closed, it's because something's went wrong with his tool. Um, my plugin essentially is a wrapper. It sits above his tool. It does stuff which his tool doesn't, and then it runs his tool. So I do a lot of the back. I do a lot of the background work. I do a lot of the renaming, removing, deleting, copying, patching stuff like that. His tool just does the main work, the actual conversion of chunk data. Um, I also updated the when it patches in. I updated these scripts to my scripts. So essentially, what it does is it reads the chunk index properly instead of being static it does it dynamically now um, so there should never have any problems extracting or importing chunks it's just another safety net in a sense um, so that something can't go wrong um, so that's basically it uh, any issues check the forum post please um, look at the pros and the cons section, look through the forum to see if there's any problems. Um, if there's any issues, just give me a message on YouTube and I'll reply to you as soon as I can. Um, or if you've got any questions regarding stuff, then let me know. Um, I'll just give you one hint. To extract profiles, I'd advise playing your, playing your world and add, for your inventory, I'd just fill it with dirt. So just put one block of dirt in each inventory slot and then your hot bar, your hot bar's the bar at the bottom which you can cycle through. Um I'd put the stuff that you want in like if you want to add enchantments or you want to modify, put the stuff in there that you want to modify. And then when you use MBT Explorer, 
just remove all the values for dirt. So essentially just click on them, pick delete, click on them, pick delete. That way it gives you ample space to modify stuff, so add multiple enchantments or increase stuff. And that way when you import, you'll have no problem importing. Um, another thing, hopefully I'll, if I get round to it, I'll import stuff dynamically. So the problem with that though is it's a lot harder than extracting is easy. Calculating offsets and sizes and stuff like that is a pain in the backside. So, But it's, it can be done. I've got stuff on here that does it. But it's not ready um, to be released. Far from it. Um, again, that's it. So I'm done. So happy modding and hopefully these tools are handy. Um, my website or my kind of blog things and the tools information at the top so if you want to check that out it's got change logs and stuff and it's got my twitter feed and a few other things on that site so if you want to give that a look knock yourself out so thank you and happy modding again bye bye